Welcome back, it's me Lou, and we're here today for another action figure unboxing and review, and today's going to be kind of a special episode. Um, we're going to be looking at the world of Ultimate Iron Man. So, uh, just to start you off with a little tease, um, this is a much older figure. Uh, this was produced by Hasbro, and this is Marvel Legends Ultimate Iron Man. And as some of you may notice, this is a very uh, different packaged figure, even though it's Marvel Legends. Um, this came out many years ago, and it's a lot different than the Marvel Legends figures that you know now. Um, the ones we know now, they don't come on a card and a bubble. They're you know packaged in smaller boxes. And uh, I don't know. Things are a lot different now. But we're going to take a look at this in a little bit. Uh, first off, I just want to talk a little bit about Ultimate Iron Man, if you're unfamiliar with the character. So, first off, Ultimate Iron Man um, is derived from the Ultimate line of Marvel Comics, which came out in the early 2000s, I believe. Um, it was kind of an attempt to take familiar superheroes, such as the X-Men and Avengers, and put them in a much more realistic world, a realistic setting, and kind of ground them a little more. Uh, up until that point, um, I mean, even now, the Marvel Universe, it was huge. The, the back history of the Avengers and the back history of the X-Men, they were kind of muddied up. There was a lot going on. There was, there was just a lot. So it, instead of this resetting everything and um, starting from ground zero, they went ahead and just kind of made an entirely new universe and that was the Ultimate Universe. Um, writer Mark Miller was um, kind of like the brainchild behind a lot of the big books like The Ultimates and Ultimate X-Men. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis handled Ultimate Spider-Man. And I think those are the three core books of the Ultimate line back in the day. And the book that kind of like shot off into the stratosphere was this. It was The Ultimates. So The Ultimates was essentially The Avengers. And if I remember correctly, the reason why they didn't call this, um, like, the Ultimate Avengers... So, in the Ultimate Universe, there was Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men. Those, those were the names of the comic books. But the Ultimate Avengers, they weren't called the Ultimate Avengers. They were just strictly called Ultimates. And if I remember correctly, I think that was a marketing deal because... I want to say the Avengers weren't as profitable as they are now. Nowadays, the Avengers kind of spearheads everything about Marvel and the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But in the 90s, early 2000s, it was mostly about, it was mostly about Spider-Man and the X-Men. Those, I think, were Marvel's two biggest franchises back um, during that time period. Uh, the Avengers, they were big in the 80s, um, 70s, 60s, whatever. But you know, by the time the 90s came around, people were just in love with the X-Men. They were in love with Spider-Man. And the Avengers... This kind of took a back seat to them, um, even though there was like, you know, the Avengers, the West Coast Avengers, um, and a lot of the Avengers had their own solo titles, you know, like Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, and whatnot. Uh, they just weren't bringing in the money like the X Men were. So the the concept was great. It's kind of like taking familiar superheroes, but bring them into a more real world, grittier setting, and that's, that was that was kind of the tone to begin with. Um, in terms of comic books in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, you know, the anti-hero became big in the 90s, and people just wanted grittier stories, uh, more realistic settings. And it, for some reason, the stars aligned, and The Ultimates was like the most perfect book in the world. Mark Miller, the way he wrote his comics, they are very cinematic. Uh, Brian Hitch, his visuals were very realistic. And this, the marriage of those things together created a universe that was believable. The superheroes were awesome. And this was a precursor to um, what you know now is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So all this stuff that you think is really cool with the Avengers and Endgame and Infinity War and all those Marvel movies. A lot of credit, I think, needs to be uh, given to the Ultimates. They kind of laid down the patchwork for what we know today as you know, the Marvel, Marvel Universe. Um, even though the Marvel's been around forever, you know, this kind of defined how we know the Avengers today. So if you haven't given 
Um, this comic book a shot, never heard of it. I strongly recommend you go hunt down the trade paperbacks or buy them on Comixology and read them digitally. You know, just, just read the first two volumes of The Ultimates. You'll fall in love with it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, even when the first Avengers movie came out, um, uh, Bill Jameis, who was the, um, he was the president of Marvel at the time when this book came out, he called up Mark Miller, the writer, and he kind of like said, you know, he's like, hey, did you check out the Avengers yet? You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like your take, but on the big screen, you know, and I think that's, I think that's, that's kind of like the biggest compliment. I mean, he granted, he probably never saw any money out of it, but the Ultimates really did lay the groundwork for what we know as Marvel today. And we're taking a look today specifically at Ultimate Iron Man. Um, this is my, I think this is my favorite, this is my all-time favorite Iron Man armor. Uh, for me, it doesn't, Iron Man's costume, it always just looked like, um, a guy who, so comic book artists, they always kind of fall into two categories. Either you're really good at drawing people or you're really good at drawing robots. And if you're good at one, you're not good at the other. And for the most part, Iron Man's costume always looked like, you know, just a muscle suit that looked kind of shiny. And his helmet, it looked like, like, I don't know, this like a really basic looking kind of like cylindrical can. And it, I don't know, there's nothing aesthetically pleasing about it. But flash forward to the Ultimates and this armor, it looked like someone took the time and care to create something that looked high tech and somewhat believable. It looked streamlined. It looked like they were paying close attention to like the way movies and video games were designing armor. Like, you know, maybe this took a page from like Halo or, you know, Star Wars or something, but it just looked cool. It looked refined. It looked sleek. And it, it was a very, very awesome fresh take on a very old character at the time. So, um, uh, let's take a look at this Ultimate comic and see if we can find anything on um, Ultimate Iron Man. So, one of the cool things about the Ultimate is that they kind of envisioned Nick Fury um, as played by Sam Jackson, you know, many years before Sam Jackson actually played Nick Fury on the big screen. So it was kind of cool. And I think they actually got his permission to do that. Uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember my details correctly, this, that's how it was. And this book's almost like 20 years old by now. Uh, yeah, there's some fun stuff going on in this book. There's a very Samuel Jackson inspired Nick Fury. And he's talking, hang on, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Bruce Banner. Ant-Man, uh, we have Wasp. It was an interesting take on Wasp, too, because um, she, in the Ultimates universe, she was portrayed as Asian. I want to say specifically, I think she was Japanese. And this created a very interesting character dynamic because in the early volumes of the comic, she kind of, even though she was um, hooked up with uh, Ant-Man, she kind of formed a relationship with Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America. And he was you know, a soldier from World War II. So it was a very interesting dynamic that they paired uh, a Japanese character with a World War II vet. And it worked. It worked. Um, and here we go. We have Ultimate Iron Man here. And uh, he's just flying by Manhattan. And he has like an entire facility just, just dedicated to the one suit of armor. He has an entire crew that sees to his assembly like every time he, he takes off or he lands and detaches his armor there's always like a, a crew ready for him it's almost like a nascar driver you know someone's like his pit crew and you can see he's covered in all this kind of like techno goo and there's jarvis and then he you know tony's kind of the dr he's kind of like he's always <laughs> He's always constantly drunk or on booze, and he's you know he's asking for his drink at 10 a.m. in the morning. And here's Jarvis, vodka and orange. It's 10 a.m., Tony. And then Tony replies, "Not in Moscow, old boy." Cheers, by the way. And then here he is, just walking around flamboyantly in his robe, talking to Nick Fury. 
And then you kind of see kind of like his Hall of Armors in the back. Uh, this is the Ultimates. This is the first volume. This is issue two. So um, the team hasn't formed officially yet. And uh, this is, I think, where he becomes... I think this is where Ant-Man becomes Giant Man. I think they're running tests and he just grows and he becomes giant. And then the big reveal at the end of the comic is like they found Cap on ice. So there's Captain America and they're thawing him out. But this is my favorite Iron Man. And let's take a look at him in action figure form. So the first time I got an action figure of um, Ultimate's Iron Man, it was the three and three quarters line. And... Uh, this was a hard figure to find. This was a pain in the butt. I wanted this figure really bad, but I could never find it. So, uh, prior to Marvel Legends, um, I think, I mean, prior to the Mar Marvel Legends you know now, um, Hasbro, they were making six inch figures, but I think there was a certain period of time, especially when they made the first Iron Man movie, that they're really putting out the three and three quarters figure. Uh, their focus was on their Marvel Universe line of action figures, and that was kind of like the main line and that was three and three quarters so this is roughly the same size as a three and three quarters gi joe or star wars figure um they were highly articulated as you can see here they do everything that a marvel legends figure could do but they're just smaller um uh this i mean the articulation it varies from figure to figure but for the most part you can see you know they're super articulated for their size and this guy was specifically made for the iron man line of three and three quarters figures so in addition to having the mainline marvel universe three and three quarter figures uh some of the characters would have their own sub lines of three and three quarter figures depending on whether or not they had like a movie uh, for example some of the 20th century fox x-men movies were out then and they had a uh, i think wolverine origins was one of the movies wolverine or x-men origins wolverine that was a movie that was out during that time period and that had a dedicated three and three quarter line. But what was interesting is that they didn't always use the character likenesses from the Fox films. Um, they're just like, you know, they'd, they have a three and three quarter Deadpool figure, but it wouldn't always necessarily reflect the Ryan Reynolds one. They might have the comic book inspired one. But I think in time they would make some of the Fox stuff. But I think later on when uh, Disney was more protective of wanting the... Uh, x-men properties back i think that's when they kind of like put the halt on uh producing the x-men figures with the with the actor character license um likeness i think uh i might be wrong uh but that's what i kind of remember well anyhow iron man he had his own dedicated line of three and three quarters figures and if you think they make a lot of iron man figures now <laughs> they made a lot of iron man, man figures back then they made six inch Iron Man figures, um, they made these, and there were so many of them. Any kind of suit you can imagine, they made it. They'd take comic book inspired costumes, uh, costumes inspired from the movies, they'd make up a couple. It was just like, it's almost like Batman. You know how like if you look at the Batman toys and they're aimed at kids and they'll make a million different Batmans, it'll be like Arctic Batman, you know, Batman on a motorcycle, space traveling Batman. It was like that with Iron Man. They gave you a uh, different Iron Man armor for like almost every occasion. And this was my favorite one. Uh, as you can see here, it takes its cue from this guy. The only slight difference is that um, the, the arc reactor and some of these other parts of them, they're not blue. On here, they're, they're yellow. But this is what the armor is based off of. Uh, the shoulders move. They're on hinges, which is awesome. Um, you know, his arms are articulated. His waist... The the legs was was always kind of an issue. You can never just kick the legs straight up. You had to like t like where they're attached um, at the crotch. It's almost like a weird ball joint that spins around. So it offers motion. It offers a certain range of motion, but you just have to be finicky about it and try to twist it in the right position. And then for as small as these figures were, they had double jointed knees. And these are great. Yeah. So if you, if you're kind of new to like this collecting action figures, especially if you love the Marvel Legends stuff, 
um, you know, take a look back and try to hunt down some of these three and three quarter figures. They'll surprise you. Uh, for one, they made at this point in time you could find almost every character you could want because they 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 were making three and three quarter figures for years, and I think they probably hit almost every character that you could imagine, every, at least every main character. Um, but be prepared; some of these figures cost a little bit more in the secondary market. But I think it's a cool collection to have. Um, you know, everyone thinks Marvel Legends is the bee's knees, and rightfully so; they're great. But these three and three quarter figures, they're beautiful. If you're like, if you grew up in the '80s or '90s, and you have a collection of like Power of the Force or GI Joe figs at three and three quarters, these are a great line of toys to supplement that. You know, you can stand them on the same shelf; they're about the same scale. They're awesome, and I can't say enough good things about this figure in particular. All right, next up we have an actual Marvel Legends figure. So this is. Uh, Marvel Legends, very different than what you know now. Um, I think Hasbro at the time, they were trying to take a page out of Toy Biz's book when Toy Biz made Hasbro Legends. Um, there's a part of me that really thinks, as great as Marvel Legends are now, there's a part of me that thinks they can't hold a candle to some of the stuff that Toy Biz did. Um, Toy Biz kind of really went all out. I mean, you could, you could argue now that the sculpting's better nowadays, they're more realistic. Um, and they're more consistent across the board, but the Toy Biz, I think they were they were risk takers. The amount of detail they put into their figures were just as insane as like McFarlane's, but they were super articulated. They came with accessories. They offered to build the figures. Um, some of the figures had vehicles, and they were really true to form in a sense that a lot of the characters were inspired by their comic book designs. So even you'd even get like a comic book bundle with some of the figures. I mean, it was just great. It was a great time for collecting. So when Hasbro had the, um, finally got the license, you know, they were dipping their toes into six-inch figures, and they kind of knew that fans wanted Marvel Legends. You know, there's something that fans were really attached to. So they released their own line of six-inch figures, and they still branded them Marvel Legends. And this one is their version of Ultimate Iron Man. Um, I want to say this came out in 2006 so the ultimate Iron Man character was already about maybe five six years old um, and I don't know if the ultimates were still a hot commodity as a book but they gave us this um, version of ultimate Iron Man and let's take a look at the package real quick the card is ginormous it's a huge card the bubble is is larger than it should be although it does house the build a figure piece um, at, at the top, you have nice character artwork of Ultimate Iron Man. I'm not sure who drew it, but I want to say it, it's colored by Richard Eisenhoff, I think. I might be wrong. But that's that art style reminds me of that. Then there's some uh, depictions of Ultimate Iron Man from the comic books. Um, I believe the bottom two are the ones drawn by Brian Hitch from the actual Ultimates comic book. Not too sure about these two. And uh, here's Ultimate Iron Man. As you can see, his helmet's removable. And we have Tony Stark with a really terrible haircut. Uh, I'm kind of worried about taking this figure out because it's about 15 years old at this point. And I'm not too fond of that kind of metallic paint. It's been no th This kind of paint's been known to chip off on other toys. Like if you have, if you purchased, I think the Thrilling Thirty Transformers Jetfire, his armor is covered in that kind of metallic, and I think it's prone to flake off. So I'm just kind of hesitant on that. But I really want to open this figure up because I really want this figure. I've been wanting this figure forever, and I forgot they made it. And one day I was just combing around eBay, and it popped up. I'm like, oh my god, I forgot about that. So I had to get it. Uh, like Marvel Legends around this time for me, especially during the Toy Biz era and the early Hasbro era, it was. I kind of like passed on them. I'd buy one or two every now and then, but I wasn't as focused on that line. I might have been fo more focused on um, Legacy Star Wars uh, and Anniversary G.I. Joes and um, I think the Transformers. So the superheroes kind of took a back seat for a while because, I mean, I was into those f during the early 90s, early 2000s, but there was a certain point in time where I'm like, ah, eh, just move on. So here's Tony. Um... And there's 
to build a figure for at least one of the pieces for Nihilus. On the back, we have a photograph of the action figure, and it has a short bio. No, it actually has a much longer bio. This is actually cool. They give you more information about the figures than they do now. Nowadays, they'll just give you like they'll spit out a sentence or two about the character, but here. They give you everything about Ultimate Iron Man. It says here, born with a chemical mutation that enhanced his intellect to superhuman levels, but cursed him with chronic neurological pain. Tony Stark is a tireless genius. Among the most brilliant of the amazing technologies he has developed is the powered armor the world knows as Iron Man. As the invincible crime fighter, he fills the triple role of billionaire industrialist, head of security for Stark International, and founding member of the worldwide crime fighting enterprise, the Ultimates. And as I mentioned before, they weren't called the Avengers, they were called the Ultimates. Despite it all, he remains plagued by personal demons, for within the armor grants him his incredible strength. He is a man like any other and more haunted than most. So for his statistics, when he wears the armor, he stands at 7 feet tall. He weighs at 2,000 pounds. His real name is Tony Stark. He doesn't have... Uh, secret identity, his identity is public, no aliases, his affiliation is the Ultimates. And as I mentioned before, in the Ultimate Universe, they're not called the Avengers, they're just called the Ultimates. His powers, enhanced intellect, highly resistance to damage, supersonic flight, unibeam, and repulsors. So you buy this figure, um, figure number one, to build a torso uh, of Annihilus. You buy Planet Hulk. And that's number two, that gives you the head. Number three is Banshee, and that produces the wings. Emma Frost, arm and leg. And I, I forgot, you know, I forgot that she made an Emma Frost figure. Um, I know we got the Hellfire Club exclusive, what was that, San Diego box set, and we got Emma Frost, but I'm not sure if we ever got the Astonishing X-Men and Emma Frost yet. Did we? Was that a Walgreens exclusive? Um, oh, no, that was... That's her black costume. Someone let me know if there's actually a Hasbro white costume, modern Emma Frost. Um, Astonishing X-Men and up. And um, there's Hercules. Very comic inspired. And then there's the Beast. This is an interesting figure because everyone got boners like last summer when at Comic-Con they unveiled the um, Hasbro uh, 20th Century Fox design X-Men characters, but you know, this is the Kelsey Grammer character and this was <laughs> back in 2006 So I forgot all about this and you know, I kind of have a small collection of those newer X-Men movie figures that Hasbro put out last year And I'm now I kind of want to hunt down this beast figure So here's Annihilus when he's all put together. It's a giant figure and this was from 2006 so it's it's kind of old, and let's take it out. I don't know if I need to remove it from this side with the tape. All right, my first impressions is as the character still remains in the plastic um, tray. <laughs> right when I took him out, my first thought was, "Whoa, baby!" Um, I just wait. I need a swig of water real quick. Um, I his head bothers me. Um, his face sculpt. It looks, it looks very Asian, to be honest. He looks like the Mandarin, um, minus the Fu Manchu. And he has this horrible, horrible bowl haircut. It's terrible. Um, I'm going to look around and see if I have an extra Tony Stark head. But, yeah, it looks weird. He has this horrible bowl haircut. And he has very Asian-looking eyes and features. Uh, the Build-A-Figure piece is kind of... It looks weird, too. <laughs> it looks... I don't know. It looks like some sort of weird multicolored sex toy or something. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of... You're probably thinking, what kind of sex toys are you using? 
um, it's just weird. There's like it's it's like weird flesh colored in certain areas, and it's this weird green and spiky bits. But it makes me kind of wish I could he had all the pieces I could put together a Nihilus. Here's his bucket. Oh man, this sucks. So he has these these like rubber ties that hold him onto the tray, and over over time, they kind of left an imprint on that metallic plastic paint I was talking about. So you could kind of see kind of peeled parts of the paint off, like right there. It's not a it's not a deal breaker. All right, so we have Ultimate Iron Man, and it the joints feel really weird. Um, this one doesn't want to move. All right, it's on. It feels like it's on a ratchet. It clicks. Um, it kicks out. This one, yeah, it kicks out too. Just have to force a little. Now it doesn't want to kick back in. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Back then. Marvel Legends, their articulation was really weird. They had this weird ball joint connected at the crotch, and you you could, it has a you could spin it at the thigh, but it, it, it's like you couldn't you had to like really work to get the pose you wanted. And this one doesn't. Oh, there we go. I have to try to loosen up just a little bit. There, he has an ab crunch. Doesn't doesn't click unfortunately. Waist swivel, as I said, this head is, oh, this head's butt ugly. Uh, I like the armor, but the proportions of the armor are really off. So it doesn't really capture the vibe of the ultimate armor like I was hoping it would. Uh, the lights kind of, kind of makes the face look overblown, so it's kind of hard to see the details. But it's like I said, he looks very Asian. Uh, the neck looks too long, and it the proportions are a little bit off. But I am happy. I do have a uh, Ultimate Iron Man now. Um, some there's some slight disappointment in um, the presentation of the character. Let me just try to get this. Try to get his legs to close in all the way. So, I'm not sure if one if one's just warped a little bit more because it was in the package. Uh, let's get his helmet on. So here's his helmet up close. Uh, nice. It's, I like this this metallic paint. It's a nice sheen, but like I said, it, it flakes off, I think, and it's already kind of chipping right there. This helmet design, it looks cool. It almost looks like a motorcycle helmet. And it, does it fit on properly? Yeah, it fits all right, but his, his neck looks a little too long. His shoulders are too high, and it brings his head up. Um... I kind of wish it looked a little bit more like this. This has the more ideal proportions for this armor. As you can see, it's it's very full. It's a very full-bodied armor. It brings out his chest. The shoulders go out really wide and has these um, pauldrons on it. This one's missing those pieces. I'm not sure if it was just a cost-effective um, maneuver. It's, it's a little bit more flat-chested, as you can see, whereas this guy He's more full-breasted. Um, yeah, there's some discrepancies. It looks like this is inspired by the Ultimate Armor, but it's not like a one-to-one -one design. Like, this one's really close to how it's portrayed in the comic books. This one's like 80%. It looks like it's not fully there. And this one has cooler legs. It, They're like kind of flared out at the bottom. He has the cool mech looking kind of feet. This one just looks like armored boots. This almost looks more like a Spartan armor from like Halo than it does Ultimate Iron Man. But I don't want to be overly, overly critical. This came out in uh, 2006 and it is what it is. Um, it's, it's very, it feels very dated. It looks kind of dated, but I, I love having multiple Iron Man suits. And it just adds to my collection of Iron Man. Um, let's look at them a little bit closer. So there's a nice yellow on the, on the faceplate. 
that metallic red is it looks really nice it's like a, a candied kind of look he does have the, the the blue energy on his arc reactor unlike this guy but this one brings these orb pieces from his shoulders down to his chest which doesn't look right um the details nice sculpting nice and crisp it's not as deep cut as I, as I would have liked but it's it's there and there's one thing this figure has that I complain about that Marvel that modern Marvel legend figures kind of lack is that there's actually a wash applied to him so it looks like they either took a dark gray or a black ink and kind of washed it along the figure so it's seep into the crevices and over the armor just to give it somewhat a minor weathered look and just to bring out some of the sculpting and details yeah wonderful figure slightly disappointed that it doesn't capture this look entirely but it's an okay attempt um, at least I have an ultimate Iron Man in this six inch Marvel scale and since we're in the subject of Marvel Legends let's take out a couple of other Marvel Legends Iron Man figures so we have here First off, we have, um, I think this is like the Mark I armor or whatever. So this Marvel or Hasbro, they released this as a two-pack. And it came with, like I think, like a Tony Stark in a business suit. And this was under the, you know, the new two-pack was released under the Marvel Legends line. But this figure specifically was released um, under the 6-inch Iron Man branded line of action figures. So when the first Iron Man movie came out, there was a six-inch dedicated line. It wasn't called Marvel Legends. It was just strictly called Iron Man. Uh, and this was the, the figure. Uh, had a play feature. You could put a missile in here and, you know, shoot it out. I, you know, <laughs> I lost a missile. Um, I always liked this figure a lot. It's such a fun, unique sculpt. It looked like what it was supposed to look like. It looked like it came straight off the, out of the screen and into the palm of my hand. Um... Great details, you know, he has the treads and the gears. Um, it's smart, you know, it has multiple points of articulation, although the range of motion is limited. You can swivel at the waist. He has that bucket looking head. He, there's some wash details on here to make him look rusty. And it looks like oil is dripping out of certain recesses. Great figure. If you didn't um, get that new double pack that came out with Tony Stark in this, get it. At least, you know, it's nice to have. If you have a hall of armors, you need you need you owe it to yourself to at least have suit number one. Uh, moving on from that, we have so this came out with this is a new figure. This came out with uh, uh, Shang Chi wave of action figures, and this is AI Tony Stark. And if as I said before, if you're missing a classic comic book inspired. Iron Man, get that figure from the Shang-Chi wave. Um, this is old school Tony. I like this figure a lot. Uh, and this is what I was talking about. You know, back in the day, like, artists, when they draw armor, it just essentially still looked like a muscle suit. You know, they just make it look shiny. And so here you can see all his abs and, I don't know, his pecs and whatever. Great figure. I love this figure. It always bums me out when I see it just sitting on the shelves because I'm like, someone needs to buy that. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, here's another Iron Man. This is in the likeness of Robert Downey Jr. I want to say this might be from the Civil War 3-pack, I think. Uh, that's the 3-pack that comes with Captain America and a Tom Holland um, Spider-Man. And it's funny because when... When I bought this figure, um, was around the time when I'm like, I kind of want to get back in some like Marvel Legends, and I wanted to hunt down all the MCU characters. And the, the price for that three pack was it was like a steal. I, for the longest time, it, I think it might have been only like thirty bucks for three figs. And you got the battle damage Tony, you got a battle damage Captain America, and you got Spider Man. And. Uh, it was such a steal. It goes for a lot now, but I remember just being like, why is this so cheap? How come people aren't buying it? And I think some what deters people from buying certain figures is I think people just want the evergreen designs. They don't want stuff that's like battle damaged, but I don't really care. Uh, up next we have... Um, this is Tony Stark. 
I want to say it's based off, of, I think they had a Iron Man cartoon some years back. And I think this is what inspired that figure. Um, this figure, his face isn't realistic. It's a very comic book, cartoony looking. But I like the, I can really appreciate this armor design. It's much more streamlined. Um, and it's very skinny on the on the figure. It's not overly it's not overly done. Uh, it's very understated, and it gets the point across. You know, here is Tony Stark as Iron Man, and I like this figure a lot. I think I like this figure so much about two of them, just so I can have one unmasked like all the time. I, I hated just swapping the heads back and forth. And then here's another one. Um, this is Iron Man, but I believe this is from Spider-Man um, Homecoming. I think this is the, the armor where Tony's not even in it. It's more so like a, a drone, I think. And uh, this figure is... Um, it's, this is kind of like proof that you know with the Hasbro Legends Marvel Legends stuff is that they reuse the molds over and over again that that the cast the castings and what comes out of them um, you know it degrades over time and then the, the sculpting and the, the details not as crisp because these are essentially the same figure they're the same mold but as you can see here the details and the sculpting super crisp nice deep lines and then, you know, you use the mold so many times, um, it loses something in translation and the molds are, they, what they produce, it's not as crisp anymore. The details become softer, the cuts become shallow, they're not as deep. And the figure looks a little bit, not, I don't want to say it looks subpar, but it's it's not going to look nowhere near as, as, this, as good as this one. But I think this is one of my favorite Iron Man armors too, just because I like the color scheme. Uh, the color scheme of this Iron Man... Uh, armor it borrows heavily from the ultimate armor I love the fact that this one has more gray and silver than red just like how this one did it, it, it really mimics it It has the red and the shoulders and the torso I mean the upper chest but then when you, once you get to the torso and the arms and the upper legs it kind of goes into that gun metal and silver so for me it's like I kind of wish you know they made this guy but like in this scale properly, or at least a mo more modern take, because this one here is very outdated. So uh, our last look, uh, I'm on the fence about whether or not I want to open this, um, but I can at least show it to you. If I change my mind and decide to open it later, I'll do a figure review on it, but I got this super cheap on Amazon. It's like $17, $18. I just bought it like a few days ago. And I didn't buy it when it first came out. I wasn't collecting the Marvel Select stuff. My brother my brother was. He collected a couple of the Ultimate Marvel Select figures. He had the Hulk. Uh, I, I want to say he might have had this too. But I couldn't say no to this. $17. Marvel Select. It's giant. It's a 7-inch scale figure. It, it's... It completely captures the look and essence of this. Um, like here, we have Ultimate Iron Man, and he's in his um, maintenance station. And this figure goes as far as to actually even provide that maintenance station. So you have that, that kind of cell or pod where he can like fly into it and just recharge himself and go under maintenance. It's This is a beautiful figure. Um, I just can't bring myself to open it. You know, for one, I don't have too many Marvel Legends select or Marvel select figures opened. I have a lot of them, but most of them I have are just on cards, hang on a wall. And if I opened this guy, I know it, I'd, I'd be jumping down a bad rabbit hole because then I'd have to hunt down the Ultimate Hulk, which might go for a lot nowadays. I think it's, the price of that jumped up like it's like going for like three times as much as it did before. And I'd need a all of a sudden I'd want to assemble the Avengers. And that's the last thing I want to do, at least with this scale of figure, because I know it would run me a lot of money. So for now, I'm just going to keep this in the package. I might get another one, and if I do, I'll open that. But I just want to at least share it with you so you can look at it. So this is the Marvel Select Ultimate Iron Man. It's beautiful. Um, 17 bucks. It's giant. It's worth every penny. I think originally this might have retailed for 30 bucks. Or 25 back in the day, which was a lot for an action figure. On the back or on the side, you get 
character artwork. And here, here's that cover that I was showing you. And the figure comes with this crazy giant maintenance station. You can remove his forearm, forearm armor and then you can plug him into it with these wires. And I believe this part's articulated. It's so cool. And it says here, Tony Stark's Tony Stark is Iron Man. With his Iron Tech armor, a revolutionary mixture of biochemical engineering and robotics, Tony Stark has figured out a way to save his own life from a degenerative brain tumor while at the same time giving him amazing powers. Even though the world knows Tony Stark is Iron Man, no one knows how he does it. For Tony Stark will never sell his amazing Iron Tech invention for fear that it will be used as weapons of mass destruction. That is the price and the responsibility of being the red and golden knight of a modern time. And here's Arachne, and here's Ultimate Hulk. Yeah, at one time, maybe like a year or two ago, Ultimate Hulk was on Amazon, like dirt cheap. I want to say maybe like 13 bucks. But I kept on passing up on him, because I'm like, I don't have any other Ultimate figures. I don't need them. And now that I want him, I think he's going for like $80. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I'm like kicking myself for not buying him cheap. And now that I'm talking about this figure, I'm like getting... I might get another one just to open it. I can't. Yeah, I, I apologize. I can't bring myself to open up this one. It's the only one I have right now, and it's really nice in package. Um, I mean, that's you know the crosshair bear being a mint on card collector sometimes. But I don't know. I gotta stay to that. Uh, so let's wrap this up. This is a long video. Long, long video. So in closing, I hope you enjoyed this uh, nice history lesson of the ultimate Iron Man. Um, he was one of my favorite characters during this time period when I read comic books. And it, for me, when they brought Iron Man to the big screen, it was kind of a nice callback to this time period. You know, when I was very fond of these stories and this style of character. So once again, thank you for checking out my video. I hope there was something you took away from this um, and enjoyed yourself. Thank you very much for devoting a little bit of your day to spend your time with me. I greatly appreciate it. Feel free to drop by anytime, and I hope you're doing well. Take care.